So moving on, uh, the final speaker in this session will be Alex Shalek. Alex is uh, the Pfizer Lavoch uh, professor at MIT. He is also the member of several other institutes around Cambridge, including the Broad Institute and uh, IMES, as well as the Koch and the Reagan Institute where his lab resides. Alex is truly a global scientist and works on topics um, around infectious disease and has maintained and built collaborations around the world and uh, is currently the co-chair of the HCA Equity Working Group. So with that, we'll turn it over to Alex. Hi everyone, I'm Alex Shelley, and on behalf of myself, Musa, Partha, and the rest of the Human Cell Atlas Equity Working Group, it's my pleasure to tell you about some of our efforts to date to try and help advance equity within the HCA. Now, as I'm sure you're all well aware, the fundamental goal of the Human Cell Atlas is to create a comprehensive reference map of the types and properties of all human cells as a basis for understanding, diagnosing, monitoring, and treating health and disease. What this means is that the HCA is anchored on egalitarian and comprehensive principles. To build a human cell atlas that's representative of all of humanity, we must compositionally consider how sex, age, ethnicity, geography, and socioeconomic status impact the properties of individual cells to generate a human cell atlas that's representative of all of humanity and equally beneficial for all. So to drive this point home, we all have common ancestry in Africa. We've evolved over time, which has resulted in genomic and phenotypic diversity, which really starts at the level of the cell. To obtain a representative profile of humanity, we have to capture this human diversity. And what that means is that it's necessary for the HCA to ensure the participation of individuals from diverse sexes, ages, ethnicities, geographies, and socioeconomic statuses. And critically, informed consent must be obtained for all of these biospecimens. And there's an entire ethics working group within the HCA that's devising policies to help ensure this. But achieving this goal requires more than just collecting biospecimens. It requires being organizationally inclusive, spanning countries, levels of education, and training stages, so we can identify and overcome potential barriers to success, create continuity, and also feed off the collective brain power of the global scientific community. And further, it requires being educationally inclusive and touching all sectors of society, both bringing in new minds that want to engage in the scientific activities of the HCA, and also educating the general public so that uh, there's a reason and interest to donate samples. Although the HCA is a nascent organization, it's rapidly growing and there are already over 1,900 members spanning 74 countries and 1,200 institutes. And in Brazil alone, there are 39 members and 22 institutes, as well as a number of other individuals that are associated with the HCA um, from various countries in Latin America, which is fantastic to see. But at the end of the day, we want to do better. We want to create an equitable HCA. And this means equity, not just with respect to representation and participation, but also with respect to benefit from the data. So we want to create a representative human cell atlas, one that samples across sex, age, ethnicity, geography, and socioeconomic status to create a foundational reference that's useful for all of humanity. We also want to foster scientific capabilities and leadership in low and middle income countries so we enable equitable participation. This is critical to overcome regional barriers and also to generate the best science and to really push forward the technological innovation. And finally, we want to make sure that we're equitable with respect to benefit from data, that things that are being generated from the HCA uh, don't only serve one specific purpose, but they're useful for everybody who's involved and equally so. And this is just an overview of what equity might mean. More holistic definition might include the concepts of empowerment, open participation, self-sovereignty, shared ownership, engagement, shared opportunity, trust and trustworthiness, transparency, balanced and fair funding, mutual accountability, reciprocity, as well as a number of other ideas. Or if you're a visual person, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to create equitable strategies that enable everybody to participate in the same way, as opposed to trying to treat all of them equivalently. And what we've come to realize is that equity at its core requires empowerment and engagement to enable equivalent participation and benefit from the HCA. To this end, we've really tried to put equity into action, starting off with an initial equity strategy meeting in London um, with the generous support of the Wellcome Trust and the Gates Foundation that enabled us to convene together 26 individuals from around the world to start to talk about what an equity plan for the human cell outlets might look like. 
We then performed the first HCA Equity Roadshow in Sao Paulo, Brazil at USP. And this was a fantastic opportunity where we got to come down and introduce the HCA and the opportunities it may afford to the Brazilian scientific community and brainstorm opportunities for us to engage with one another. Afterward, we had the first official HCA equity meeting in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, where a number of individuals from around the world came together to help us finalize some of our equity recommendations and to think about where we might begin moving forward. And so more comprehensively, our first steps to date have included not only the initial strategy meeting the Brazilian Roadshow and the formal launch in Addis, it's also included funding to help create a roadmap for equity, and also partnering with funders to think about how we could enhance empowerment and engagement through cross-training programs. Um, and as a follow-up to the Brazilian Roadshow, coming soon will be a Vietnam Roadshow. A little bit more on this, the Vietnam Roadshow is really designed to try and raise the profile of single-cell genomics in Vietnam and to educate and mentor scientists on world-leading methods. The goal there, unlike the Brazilian Roadshow, is actually to perform some single-cell methods in Vietnam with Vietnamese researchers with support from a number of HCA members and to really not only show what Vietnam can do, but also to show the Vietnamese people what they can do as part of this initiative. Um, we're going to, and as part of this, try and educate local funders on the importance of HCA activities and um, try and create connections between the Vietnamese research community and the international research community that will help to sustain activities once the roadshow is finished. Well, more practically, what did this look like? Well, the idea was that we were gonna do two weeks of activities, one in Hanoi and one in Ho Chi Minh City. And we had originally planned to do this in the summer of 2020, but given COVID, we're now hoping to do it in 2021. The idea was that on Monday, we would do some high level lectures talking about the overall single cell workflows and some of the experimental methods. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday, we would actually run real biological samples of relevance to the local community. On Thursday and Friday, we would both sequence those samples and also begin some bioinformatic workshops to help explain how to analyze the data that was about to be generated. And specifically, our goal was really to get real practical results and to help generate data that would be of relevance to local questions and priorities within Vietnam that could be used as foundational information for a paper to come later. To us, at the end of the day, what success might look like, it would be participation from researchers in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City and from the international HCA community. We'd have effective transfer of knowledge and connectivity with the people of Vietnam and the scientific community. And we generate some real practical results that we create dialogue, um, both with local funders and with the scientific community to help push research moving forward. So what we really like about this approach is that it enables us to fulfill some of our initial equity suggestions. If we ask questions like how can the HCA ensure representative sampling given limited financial, technical, and human resources, we really believe it's by empowering regional partners to establish local priorities and performance goals. And that's really what we were doing in Vietnam. If we want to figure out how to deal with the local complexities associated with the global atlas, it's really by speaking and engaging people to understand how to address them. And that's what we were attempting to do here. Finally, if we want to ensure global buy-in to the HCA, it means educating both the general public as well as the scientific community, and those are the things that we had planned. But really, these are just the first steps in achieving equity in the HCA. There are a number of ongoing needs. We need to continue to perform outreach, workshops, trainings, and roadshows, really to reach underrepresented geographical areas to broaden exposure and training and engage students, postdocs, and PIs to tell people about the HCA, why it's valuable to get involved, not just for the overall project, but also for local research priorities. We have to do more than just these initial interactions. We have to support deeper, more meaningful connection. That's where we think these bi-directional training grants come in that would allow students, postdocs, and PIs from underrepresented geographical areas to spend time in expert labs learning methods. And also for members from these expert labs that have been deeply involved in the HCA to go spend time in underrepresented regions to engage with a larger swath of individuals and help um, perform knowledge transfer. We also think it's critical to see to facilitate pilot projects to create data sets that are relevant to local needs and priorities in underrepresented regions. These are foundational for generating uh, grant applications and also for showing individuals in each region they can um, participate in a way that's equivalent and that's equally beneficial so that they can really be full partners in this entire process. And while we've been able to identify a number of existing programs that we could likely leverage, we're always looking for support in this and additional opportunities that we could go engage to um, do more. 
So really for now, the equity working group is really focused on these first couple steps on empowerment, education, training, and outreach, because we think that this is critical, really getting people involved in the HCA, helping them to understand what's going on in the HCA and making them equivalent partners. One of the questions that constantly comes up is how could you help? Well, there are a number of different ways, and we're always delighted to engage with people who would like to participate in the process. You could, for example, join or host a roadshow. You could help create educational content. You could participate in a training, for example, by hosting foreign scientists in your lab. You could facilitate training by enabling your trainees to participate either locally or globally. You could provide funding if you're in a position to do it. You could include underrepresented areas or local scientists in your pilot projects and atlases. You could also connect us with those who are interested in equity, education, and empowerment and have a lot of experience in the space. We come to you with open minds and with a desire to learn from these individuals so that we can help to drive equity within the HCA to the greatest degree possible. And any ideas are most welcome. And with that, we'd like to thank you for your time and partnership. We'd like to thank the Wellcome Trust, the Broad Institute, the Reagan Institute, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, all of whom have provided catalytic funding to get this started. We'd like to thank all of the individuals who've been our partners in London and in the Brazilian Roadshow and in Addis and in trying to set up things in Vietnam, who've really helped us to move this forward. And we'd like to thank all the people who have yet to be engaged, but would like to be engaged in the process. We come to you with open arms and we look forward to working with you. Great, thank you very much, Alex. Again, we'll once again uh, encourage everyone to add their questions to the chat and uh, take the opportunity to ask Alex questions about the Equity Working Group, uh, as well as maybe some of his work. So maybe one uh, question to ask Alex is, uh, how can groups get in touch with you and the Equity Working Group? Is there kind of a preferred or efficient way for them to reach out? So there is, so it's a great question. Um, you can always just email me directly. It's just my last name at mit.edu and I will connect you. And there is also an equity working group email that's eqwg at human cell atlas. Um, and um, either way works, uh, but please email me, ask questions. Um, we're always open to having those discussions and to connecting people. Um, and if I don't know who the right person is, I will find that person and uh, connect you with them. Okay. And then um, thinking about some of the resources that are out there as more and more become available, do you think that there are certain tools or um, you know, resources that those that are interested in getting involved in the HCA, whether it's protocols or data, are really you know, particularly good opportunities and places to start in thinking about uh, this sort of work? So it's another great question. I think that one of the things that um, we've been thinking a lot about in this time are what are the resources that already exist that we could use to help get people more engaged. Um, and there's now, there wasn't previously, but there now is a resources tab set up on the Human Cell Atlas webpage, thanks to um, Tracy and John and a number of other individuals and Gary who spoke earlier today. And uh, for people that have materials that would like to add them to that uh, website, please let us know. And for people who are looking at that website who see that uh, the materials that they want aren't there or that something isn't clear, please let us know because I think that actually this is a fantastic time for us to create remote educational materials to help support people all around the world. I've actually been surprised by how much we've been able to do with remote education. I was worried that it was actually gonna be very ineffective from teaching a class now at MIT and it's actually surprised me how well it's gone. And I think that one thing that we do need to do is to collate all our resources, put them online, but I don't think in any way that that um, reduces the need to have some of these in-person meetings. You know, I'm as I was reflecting to you, Jenna, and to Lucio earlier, as well as the others, it's amazing how far um, Things have gone and really, you know, those in-person meetings, the hands-on demonstrations, I think are critical, but I think having resources that everybody can access um, are essential as well. Yeah, it really is a testament and amazing uh, how far this group has come. So again, real kudos to the organizers and also to all of you for joining and participating. Uh, a couple more questions that have continued to come in. So uh, a few or, or maybe one specifically is around um, how really enthusiastic groups that are looking to participate but may not currently have all of the resources that many of the labs in the HCA have, you know, how can they get engaged uh, either in the publication of single cell papers or maybe even contribute to some of the analysis um, of, of this work? So it's a great question. I think that um, you can reach out. I know that 
people within the network are always looking for other individuals with whom to connect. Um, I think that one of the amazing things that you can do with single cell data that already exists is you can use it to reanalyze exist existing data sets. Maybe you have bulk RNA sequencing or microarray data that you've generated in the past. Um, you know, say for example, on some um, on some topics of local relevance, you can use the single cell data to do deep convolutions, get deeper data, deeper understanding, and use that as the basis for a publication. You know, in other places, we're always looking for people to partner with who have a deeper understanding of the biology um, and who can give us insights and, you know, I'd be amazed by how much you can do without being able to physically run stuff to do computationally. All of our stuff now is on, you know, um, Google Cloud on Terra. And so those are things where with an email address, we can give access to anybody in the world. Um, and so um, I'd say reach out um, and, you know, ask questions. We will connect you in. Uh, think of, we can tell you how we've used some of our single cell data to reanalyze existing data sets so that you can imagine how to apply it to your own data. Um, and, you know, I think that in a lot of places, your goal of looking at inflammation in CCI that Norbert brought up earlier is a good example. There are a number of um, diseases and um, that impact people all around the world that have uh, inflammatory component to it. And the more that we can think about how inflammation impacts tissues across multiple different instances, the better we'll be able to understand the underlying principles and think about common interventions. So, you know, selfishly, I'd love to interact with all of you because it actually deepens my knowledge base, makes my science better, um, and actually leads, uh, leads us to better opportunities to intervene to help restore human health. So maybe one last uh, question or a part of this prior question, Alex, is uh, there's curiosity whether there's an active campaign within HCA to help uh, individuals kind of connect to or work on these papers. Would you encourage them to reach out to you or maybe to some of the leaders of tissue networks like we heard about from Gary and Muzz and others earlier, or you know maybe some guidance on, for them on this? I would encourage you to do both. I mean, um, you know, this is something I say to my students all the time when they don't email people, I'd say, you know, the reason I'm in academia is because I like interacting with students. I like interacting with scientists. I like being part of this community. Please, you know, fill my inbox as often as you want. Uh, you know, I can speak for the others that you just mentioned. Please fill their inboxes as well with me, CC. Um, would love to have those conversations. Would love to connect you. And, you know, as you've sort of seen with the Equity Working Group, these are activities that are works in progress. Um, where we're sort of adapting and learning as we go and adjusting our strategies. And so if it becomes clear from some of the conversations we're having with people that there are new things that we need to do, we're very open to that. Um, and really we want to do things that are going to help to support the community. So the more you can engage with us, the more you can tell us, the better I think we'll ultimately do at the end of the day. Great, and maybe uh, one last question, and that is maybe the question around equity and contributions to paper. So within the HCA, when some of these groups begin to engage and contribute, is there guidance or is there thought within the equity working group or maybe some of the publication committees on ensuring that everyone is recognized and acknowledged for this work? So, um, you know, I, I'll have to go back and check and see what formally exists. We had a paper where we repurposed some existing data to look at, um, you know, likely targets of, um, of SARS-CoV-2 that uh, I think that you've mentioned earlier today. And that was a paper that involved 60 authors from around the world. It had scientists from South Africa, from Europe, you know, from all over. And I think that that's just a testament to how much scientific sharing is happening now and to the opportunities that are possible. So I think we need to think about how to more, how to formalize that and how to formalize contributions and how to track that so that we can monitor progress towards equity. Um, but people seem to be very excited to share. And I've seen a lot of great papers now that just have you know many, many authors. And I think it's really a testament to what we can do when we work together as a community. So, um, you know, I, I think that there are always good solutions. The paper that we published had a first author in South Africa and a couple of first authors here in Boston. And I think that more and more initiatives like this will make that the norm as opposed to the exception. Great. Thank you very much, Alex. So that concludes the session. Uh, if we're all in person, I think I'd ask that everyone give all the speakers a round of applause. So thank you again for a series of excellent talks. Uh, we're now at lunch, and I've been told that we'll uh, go ahead and take the break but we will reconvene on time, which means 1.30 p.m. Uh, for East Coast or Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, so thank you all very much again. Congratulations to the organizers and hope to see all of you in the future and ideally in person. Take care. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>